I'm gonna push him right in.
Yuk, yuk. Welcome, welcome everyone to this unique, welcome to this unique culmination of the long, strange trip that is the senior spring of 2020. In the shadow of Bromley Mountain, we gather in cars, trucks, big rigs, I even think I saw some motorcycles coming in to celebrate the historic class of 2020 at Burn Burn Academy's 187th commencement. That's a cue. How great is this setup? Let me ask something else. Has everyone had a good week? How about the senior parade? Pretty good? So I'd like to start by making some noise for the incredible planning team that has, that has put together a week long or more string of events celebrating the class of 2020. Thank you planning team, thank you everyone who helped execute this. I can tell you when COVID hit, we wanted to do more than just make lemonade out of lemons. We wanted to capture the dignity of our traditions while creating something new and fun and different. This, my friends, is different. At this point, in this moment, moment, my gratitude knows no bounds. I'm grateful to have seen each graduate this week. And just as important, I'm grateful have got to have spent time with your support team, your family, and your friends who surrounded you through this journey. The past four days, I've been able to witness the love shared among families, the joy of purposeful accomplishment, and the pre appreciation for all that the great BBA team offers to our students. It's been incredible. It has been an honor to share these moments with you. And while we lost much this spring, this spring, while we lost much this spring, we gained as well. We gained a reminder that we are all in this together, that the closeness of this community can transcend our physical proximity. We were reminded of the importance of family as we spent countless hours all together as families. And we were reminded of our love for each other and our desire to be the get together, the real togetherness that comes with the day-to-day -day rhythm of education. Absence, absence most definitely made our hearts grow fonder. So we are gathered today for this special gathering to celebrate, to honor, to share love, and dare I say it, to set an example for our great country of what a community of patriots looks like. We are different in myriad ways including but not limited to our skin color, our family background and political views, yet we are united in our love for our children, our love for education, our love for Vermont, and love for the beautiful ideals of this country. To get things going and to honor this great country, I invite Matthew Scott, a young man of powerful presence and powerful voice, to come to the podium to sing America the Beautiful. Matthew asks that we join the second time around. So stand back, let's make some noise for Matthew Scott.
this time, I call forward Academic Dean Jen Hyatt to share a special reading for the class of 2020. Class of 2020, you have been faced with the unprecedented challenge of waiting out a pandemic at home while simultaneously waiting for this day to arrive. And so I offer this ex excerpt from geobiologist Hope Jaron's memoir, Lab Girl, as a tribute to your patience and perseverance. A seed knows how to wait. Most seeds wait for at least a year before starting to grow. A cherry seed can wait for a hundred years with no problem. What exactly each seed is waiting for is known only to that seed. Some unique trigger combination of temperature, moisture, light, and many other things is required to convince a seed to jump off the deep end and take its chance, to take its one and only chance to grow. A seed is alive while it waits. Every acorn on the ground is just as alive as the 300-year-old oak tree that towers over it. When you go into a forest, you probably tend to look up at the plants that have grown so much taller than you ever could. You probably don't look down, where just beneath your single footprint sit hundreds of seeds, each one alive and waiting. When you are in the forest, for every tree that you see, there are at least a hundred more trees waiting in the soil, alive and fervently wishing to be. After scientists broke open the coat of a lotus seed and coddled the embryo into growth, they kept the empty husk. When they radiocarbon dated this discarded outer shell, they discovered that their seedling had been waiting for them within a peat bog in China for no less than 2,000 years. This tiny seed had stubbornly kept up the hope of its own future while entire human civilizations rose and fell. And then, one day, this little plant's yearning finally burst forth within a laboratory. Each beginning is the end of waiting we are each given exactly one chance to be. Each of us is both impossible and inevitable. Every replete tree was first a seed that waited. Congratulations on this new beginning class of 2020, this end of waiting. May you all continue to grow, flourish, hope and thrive. We're so proud of you. Thank you, Dean Hyatt. Before we move on to our program, I also want to acknowledge that important members of this class are absent from tonight's ceremony. We send special greetings to 18 international students, students who ventured from faraway land to come to this little corner of Vermont, to this strange school for them, in a strange language for them, and learn about American culture and community. They brought with them their own cultures, they brought with them their own talents, and our hearts are with you today. We wish you were here in person. On important occasions like this, we also think of those we wish were still here on Earth. I ask that we bow our heads and have a moment of silence to bring those loved ones into this special moment. Vermont is a very special place on earth, and we gather today to celebrate everything great about this school, this community, and the fabulous class of 2020. That was an applause line. Thank you. <laughs> we now move on to the salutatorian introduction. This year's salutatorian has been a talented leader in BBA's instrumental ensembles for the past four years. She has also taught music at a local preschool and interned with middle school music teachers. This first chair alto sax player will continue to find her groove as a music education major next year at Ithaca College. Please welcome salutatorian Danielle McKenzie. Good afternoon. 
afternoon, everyone. This is definitely not what I pictured of my senior graduation. However, it's a beautiful day and a beautiful scene that they created for us, so thank you to everyone who made this possible. First things first, I believe it would be inappropriate for me to not mention the current situation in this country. I am, of course, talking about George Floyd and the protests following his death. I'm not going to speak for long on this subject because I'm assuming many, if not all of you, understand it quite clearly. I just wanted to say that I'm proud to come from a community who stands for justice and social change, a community that is not silent, a community who will never be silent in times like these. <laughs> on a lighter note, we did it. This has been an incredibly strange and stressful time for everyone, adjusting to online classes and having to keep up our spirits and academic motivation. I'd first like to address my speech and composition class. I know we were cut short, and I'm very excited to be giving this last speech to you. However, there's definitely a few more people here than the last time I spoke in that class. I am sure there are many of you out there that I never got to know, or never even had a class with. That is, in part, because after my freshman year, I pretty much spent any free moment down in the Riley Center. It began with a slight interest in music, then I made some amazing friends, and then I decided music was what I wanted to do forever, and a lot of hard work followed. Now, I'm going to be majoring in music education at Ithaca College this fall, along with my fellow graduate, Matt Scott, and a 2019 BB graduate and close friend, Anna Freeburn. <laughs> so, in summary, all that time down there did pay off. All that time down there helped me realize that music is what I love and what I want to do forever. And none of this would have happened if it weren't for the amazing program run by Neil and Julie Freeburn. Um, the Freebirds could attest that in 2016, they would never have predicted that this small, timid, musically untrained girl would ever end up studying music seriously. I'm grateful that Neil Freeburn saw some potential and helped guide me to where I am today. However, <laughs> I'm assuming many of you are less sure of your passion at this moment. I would bet many of you who are college bound are going in undecided or into exploratory programs or might even change your major at some point. I'm assuming those who are not college-bound don't have everything figured out quite yet. Maybe even some adults out there. Considering the crazy world event we're currently experiencing, have spent some time thinking, what do I love to do? Or even just, what do I like to do? I want to assure you all that my cert certainty in my future job is a fluke at best. To those graduating, we're all so young. There is no need to figure everything out right now. And to those in the audience, it's never too late to expand your horizons. That being said, I encourage you all to try new things. Make connections with people in different fields or with different interests and just explore. I would never have become a musician if it wasn't for Neil and Julie Freeburn and the other wonderful people I met in that program. I know you're in a stressful time right now and I don't know what all your plans are for this fall, but I do know that many people around you, especially the Burn Burton faculty, will help you explore, help guide you, and help fuel your interests. Or just use the internet. <laughs> Scour Wikipedia, learn a new language, if you're going to college, look at every major and minor they offer. Ask questions about everything. Watch the news, sing, dance, make pottery, make pottery badly, paint badly, or paint well if you're blessed with that kind of talent. Just try things. There's no repercussions for exploring and there is no shame in doing something badly. We all have to start somewhere. I would like to close with a quote I discovered in my junior year existentialism class. A quote that helped me in my pursuit of studying music and a quote I hope will help you as you guys all enter the next stage of your life. But better to be foolish with happiness than foolish with misfortune. Better to dance clumsily than to walk lamely. So learn from me my wisdom. Even the worst thing has two good sides. Even the worst thing has two good dancing legs. So learn, you higher men, how to stand on your own proper legs. Frederick Nietzsche. Thank you everyone and congratulations. Thank you, Danielle. I'm pretty sure you're going to get an A in that speech and comp class. Next up, our valedictorian honors go to a Vermont presidential scholar and fourth generation bulldog. Fourth generation. As captain of our mountain biking team, she led them to win a tri-state championship this fall. She was also a winning competitor and captain of our Nordic ski team, and she has proven skills as a unicyclist. She's a freshman mentor, 
an environmental club leader and participant in our German exchange and Alabama service learning trips. This year's top academician will pursue pre-med studies at Middlebury College. Congratulations to Leah Mori, who will now deliver the valedictory address.
Life is a highway that knows no speed limit. The pavement isn't always pristine, and there are probably going to be wrecks along the way. However, there is almost always a road that leads where you want to go. Number two, float like a Cadillac, sing like a Beamer. Be flexible and open-minded, but fight for what you believe in. Number three, you'll always have a radiator springs to come back to. No matter how far you stray or how many mistakes you make, there will always be a place to call home and people to help you back on your feet. Lastly, if you ever find yourself headed down a road you don't want to be on, find your Sally and go for a drive. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. Next up, we have the senior class gift presentation by Lily Craig and Grace Sherwood. Please come forward. and staff as a first-hand account of 2020, or part of it, because things just started moving really quickly. Um, we hope that in the future, BBA students will be able to look back on this book as a resource for history class, just out of curiosity, or even to gain a little perspective on how good they have it. This idea was suggested by Ms. Hogan, one of BBA's school counselors, and immediately we knew it was a great one. The incorporation of student writing, artwork, and photography create a work that is both authentic to the time and authentic to the class itself. So not only is it super cool, but it is also perhaps the most personal and thoughtful gift that BBA has ever received. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Everyone who submitted something, give yourself a pat on the back. Go ahead. Yeah, feels good. And thank you to all the students and faculty that have worked so hard to make this possible. Now, my Vice President, Lily Craig, is going to read an excerpt to give you an idea of what's in this thing. Okay, awesome. Okay, this uh, excerpt was submitted anonymously. I don't really feel like writing about the coronavirus because honestly, I'm over it. What I will say is that these times has taught me a lot. Being in isolation and without the daily routine of going to school or practice or hanging out with friends has made me realize how much I've taken for granted. Due to the situation we're in now, I've realized that some things, I, I realized some things that I will always appreciate a little more because now I know what it's like to live without them. Our class never really got a chance got a lot of closure from leaving BBA. I didn't think our last day of school would be the last time I'd ever have a normal school day. Some advice I'd give future BBA classes would be this. Cherish your time on campus. I would love to have one last day with the class of 2020, one last walk up the senior lot with whoever happened to pull up at the same time as you, one last flex block with a random assortment of people at the library, one last walk through the hallways with people on their way to their next class. It's ordinaries like these, ordinary moments like these, that I miss the most. Grace and I, along with Emma Tobin, Aaron Inuzi, and Tebe Matiku, worked extremely hard to put this book together. And without further ado, we present the Class of 2020 Senior Gift to Mr. Tashin and Ms. Kenny. Thank you, Lily and Grace, and thank you, class of 2020, for a slice of history. And it really is a slice of history. This is a school that's almost 200 years old, and this is a first. So you truly have made history, and this anthology will be in our library and future generations 
will look back and learn and understand. So thank you very much for that gift. Now, we move on to some awards presented by Associate Head Meg Kenny. Let's make some noise for her. I'd like to start by acknowledging the individual strengths of all members of the senior class. These past few months have really tested everyone, and I'm so proud of how you, the class of 2020, have pushed through the challenges of remote learning to finish strong and earn your BBA diploma. Many of you have been great role models and mentors. Many of you have performed jobs as essential workers, and I applaud all of you. Still, others submitted inspiring spirit messages that have uplifted our whole community. I thank you for your leadership as seniors, and I truly honor your effort. The commencement program provides a list of seniors who received academic excellence awards and athletic awards at our annual awards ceremony, awards ceremony on May 26th. Because that was a virtual event, I'd like to recognize them now again. I ask that they each give a wave in place as I announce their names. The Bennett Music Prize was awarded to Stephen Mathias. The Ceramics Award to Marjan Booth Gage. The Cinematography Award to Madison Chase. The Dance Award to Araya Holloman. The Design Award to Jia Hong Wei. The Drama Award to Zoe Grigsby. The English Award to Leah Mori. John Fay Memorial Award to Harriet Dahlstrom. The Fine Arts Award to Parker Coolis. The French Award to Esther McKenzie. The German Award to Karsten Harixma Tolg. The International Student Award to Wen Ru Tong. The Mathematics Award to Xuan Wang. The Dr. Richard Overton American History Award to Eva Morrow. The Photography Award to Olivia Garvin. The Science Awards went to Lauren Carter, Leah Mori, and Logan Sands. Upstander Award to Evelyn Seidner. The Spanish Award to Spencer Coolis. The Jeffrey Charbonneau Memorial Award to Ethan Simons. The Ryan DeFelice Memorial Awards to Tommy Baker and Jordan Smith. The NFHS Award in Excellent Sportsmanship went to Aaron Iannuzzi and John Maselli. The 12 Star Bulldogs, Michael Duddy, Joseph McCoy, John Maselli, Quinn Murnahan, Logan Sands. And finally, I'd like to recognize our graduating seniors who earned the new Vermont State Seal of Biliteracy, a national honor for those who have reached a high level of fluency in at least two languages. They are Asa Ackerman Least, Maddie Gorley, Karsten Harixa Toll, Sue Lang Stephen Jin, Spencer Coolis, Esther McKenzie, Evelyn Seidner, Shepard Siegel, Michaela Sermova, and Yiming Wang. Let's give them all a well-deserved round of applause. At this time, I turn over the presentation of the annual Burren Burton Academy Senior Commencement Awards to Mark Tashton. When he calls your name, please come forward to take the prize that has been set out on the table in front of the stage. Congratulations.
the Outstanding Senior Athlete Awards honor two graduating, honor two graduating seniors who have excelled academically while exemplifying our mission. Honor two graduating seniors who have excelled athletically while exemplifying our mission of responsibility, integrity, and service on and off the sports field. The first award goes to a team captain in football, hockey, and baseball. He is Vermont's Gatorade Player of the Year and was one of 12 national finalists for the Heisman High School Scholarship. He led our football team to a 2019 state championship and he was part of a team of four who worked to create a unified sports program at BBA in partnership with Special Olympics and the Vermont Principals Association. While his leadership and talent will be missed greatly at BBA, they will serve him well at Hobart College, where, we, where he will join his brother on the football team and pursue studies in education. Congratulations to Joe McCoy. And while Joe is walking up, I'll announce the next one because the next award winner is a soccer phenom and two-sport varsity soccer captain. She received All-State and All-American All honors, served as a freshman mentor, played varsity basketball, and volunteered with youth soccer and unified baseball basketball, all while playing on an elite national travel soccer team. She holds the BBA school record for all-time goals, 65 goals. That's soccer. Like one goal is a lot in soccer. <laughs> and she was recruited to play soccer at Division I University of Massachusetts Amherst, where she plans to study kinesiology. kinesiology. Congratulations, Grace Pincus. They're parked side by side, so you guys come up together. And you see them hugging, but they've been in the same social bubble already, so that's okay. Come on up, guys. While they're coming up, I'm gonna to go to the next award, Creative Arts Awards. The Outstanding Creative Artist Awards recognize two graduating seniors who have excelled within the area of visual, performing, or media arts, while simultaneously exemplifying our mission of responsibility, integrity, and service. This evening, we recognize a spectacular artist who seeks to change the world. She is incredibly talented and dedicated to her craft, but it is her insistence on always exploring deeper understandings that set her apart. She has interned with professional artists, worked as a gallery assistant, and created art salon events with her peers. This Sunday afternoon, you may want to attend the drive through art show she organized at the Windhall Community Arts Center. This Mountain Campus alum will be moving on to Brooklyn to study painting at the Pratt Institute. Congratulations to Sloan Peary. And while Sloan comes up, our next award honors a graduate who's been featured in every BBA theater and choral production over the past four years. He was a three-year member of the American Choral Directors Honors Chorus, and he also sang at Carnegie Hall. From leading roles on our stage to serving the Global Citizenship Club and mentoring freshmen, he has made a great impact on our school. Next up, he will pursue studies in music education at Ithaca College. Bravo, Matthew Scott. The John Azell Community Service Award is given to a graduating senior who has exemplified the qualities of, of the school's community service program in attitude and willingness to help others and in the quality of the work which has been accomplished. For many years, this senior has been absolutely committed to helping the people in her birth country. Through her work with Our Guatemala, she has raised over $35,000, led multiple service trips to build bunk beds and donate supplies, and facilitated educational programming at BBA and other schools about the systemic issues related to poverty in Guatemala. 
Here at BBA, she leads the Global Citizenship Club and serves as a freshman mentor and school ambassador. This fall, she will enroll at the College of the Holy Cross. I'm delighted to present this service award to Isabel Townsend. The E. H. Henry Awards are presented annually in honor of former headmaster E. H. Al Henry. They honor students who have earned the highest respect of both peers and adults. Together, the faculty and seniors select two students who are considered by the BBA community to be exemplary scholars and citizens. The first award goes to a young woman who exemplifies bulldog spirit. She always leads with great humor and energy. She participated in service trips to Alabama and Guatemala, and she traveled with a leadership program to India and Nepal to learn about their public health and community development. Closer to home, she volunteers at her li library and helps prepare meals with the Grateful Hearts program. Next year, she will take a gap year at the Arava Institute for Environmental Studies in Israel. After that, she will begin studies in health, science, society, and policy at Brandeis University. Congratulations, Evelyn Seidner. And now on to the Headmasters Awards. These awards celebrate character and echo three words in our mission, responsibility, integrity, and service. The first Headmasters Award goes to a young woman with a sense of adventure. She studied in Australia in her sophomore year, on the mountain campus in her junior year, and she hopes to spend next year in Costa Rica on a study program. Here at BBA, she serves as a varsity tennis player and freshman mentor, and she has been a campus leader in sustainability efforts. This year, she planned and executed BBA's Earth Day celebration. A talented student, she is also admired for her kindness for all and passion for the environment. In the fall of 2021, she will pursue environmental studies at the University of Vermont. Congratulations to Karina Crane. The second Headmasters Award honors a young man who has served BBA in so many ways. As a freshman mentor, school ambassador, two-year ice hockey captain, leader of our unified basketball program, and a member of our student athletic leadership team. A talented three-sport athlete, he earned academic All-American honors for lacrosse, and he was named the NAIA Male Scholar Athlete of the Year for Section 1, and an area that encompasses, new, encompasses the New England states, New York, and New Jersey. He is also an amazing photographer and an award-winning cinematographer who will pursue film studies and photography as a park scholar at Ithaca College. Congratulations to John Maselli. <laughs> and
And we now move on to our commencement speaker, beloved Spanish teacher, Sue Ritchie. Sue is a member of, a Bur of Burn Burton's class of 1974, and she has capped off her 33-year teaching career with a lucky 13-year period at Burn Burton Academy. Tonight's speech will be her final assignment before retiring to her lakeside home. What's important to know about Sue Ritchie? Number one, she exudes positivity and bulldog spirit. Two, she is famous for hitting reply all on email at every opportunity. Three, her favorite colors are teal and purple, and today she does not disappoint. And four, she is absolutely crazy about ducks. I don't know why. But most of all, Sue is a wonderfully supportive teacher who cares so much about her students. Her classroom is a special haven, even for those not enrolled in Spanish classes. She is an inveterate traveler who has always enjoyed leading many student groups abroad over the years. She has modeled lifelong learning through her frequent visits to Spanish-speaking countries to maintain her strong Spanish fluency, and she loves to walk. Most of us have seen her walking around town, waving happily to each honk that greets her. Class of 2020, let's give a honking welcome to your commencement speaker, Sue Ritchie. Hello everyone. First and foremost, I want to congratulate the 2020 senior class on one of the biggest days of your lives. Thank you for inviting me to speak. It is truly an honor to be with you today and to share some ideas and experiences that may inspire your confidence and excitement as you step forward today onto whatever great path hits you. I graduated from BBA in 1974, and in those days it was called Burn Burton Seminary. What a privilege to witness our school's evolution over the past 50 years. And yes, you can do the math. At 64, this is why I am retiring. <laughs> Age! <laughs> our school's commitment to growth and innovation in the setting of unity and community is evident in the complete transformation of what was BBS into what now is BBA. Perhaps what I love most about BBA is that we are a community and we care about each other. We hold doors. We greet each other with smiles. I look forward to continuing to experience all that I love about BBA when I return to visit from time to time. And I challenge you all to take inspiration from our BBA community moving forward as you navigate the new paths ahead of you. <clears throat> this has been an unusual year. Understatement, right? The congratulations due to you today are perhaps even greater in the days since COVID became a part of our lives. When I graduated, I could have never envisioned any of what we have experienced over the past several months teaching from the kitchen counter with my cat crawling over my keyboard. The mere fact that technology has made this remote learning experience possible is incredible. Had these events of the past few months happened in 1974, the experience would have been so different. There would have been no remote learning. We didn't have computers. We didn't have cell phones or iPads. I did all of my college papers on an old royal typewriter with correction tape. It was not fun nor easy. For all my Spanish students, all language students, imagine a world without Google Translate, a world with only dictionaries. Study for me was really a test of perseverance as I made mistakes and it took a long time to fix them. Not like now, when we have pretty much an instant fix for everything. 
Look at what we have accomplished now that I couldn't have imagined then because of technology and because of our school community. We have adapted to online learning and communication with Google Hangout and Zoom. Believe it or not, until we closed the school, I did not know that either existed. We had training and in a matter of two days, we were online with students and resuming classes almost immediately. I really will give you all hugs and kudos as you were really ready for this. You all did it with great gusto. <laughs> Talking to many other teachers and their friends, not everyone could experience what we did. A huge woohoo to our school! Yeah! We have done it, we did it, and we will continue to persevere. So what I hope for you is that you take this adaptive spirit, this persevering spirit, this positive spirit forward with you as you navigate the new paths ahead of each of you. I don't know what each of you has as a vision for your path. When I graduated, I was so curious. Being from a small town, all I can think of is, what's beyond that mountain? What world is there? So I chose to go to a small college in Michigan, Albion College, a perfect fit as it had 2,000 students and was not overwhelming. It had a nature center to walk. Yes, my love of walking goes way back. I could cross country ski there and it had a great small downtown. Also, it had a diversity that I had not been exposed to in Manchester. So many different walks of life to learn about. Though the college campus was a bit removed from the rest of the area, I learned to go out and be curious. Being curious is a good thing. Being curious is how you learn. I learned a lot. I learned that no matter what, we are all human beings and we all have the same needs. We need love, we need to be cared for, and we need to be respected for who we are. I hope that you will all experience and embrace a similar sense of curiosity and open-mindedness as you navigate your new paths. And some of you may ask, how did you come to love Spanish? Well, when I entered Albion, I actually wanted to be a geology major. Oops, my math background was not strong enough, and my dad tried to help me, but to no avail. So I took Spanish. I loved my teacher. He was so much like Harpo Marx, and if you don't know who the Marx Brothers are, you need to go back and look it up for a laugh. But he was amazing. He was a hoop, he was fun to have in class, and he is the one that gave me the love of the language. From then on, I loved all of my Spanish teachers that I had. So I thought, hmm, enjoy Spanish? Go to Mexico for four months? Spend time with a family and travel? A no-brainer. I did it all, and I loved every moment and majored in Spanish and education with a minor in geology, which meant I got to take all of the cool seminar courses like earthquakes and volcanoes and environmental issues and global warming. Yep, in those days they had already predicted all of this. The great point? I thought I knew my path. It turned out not to be my path, but an incredible new path that opened up one that I hadn't even been looking for, a path that led to a lifetime of joy in teaching and traveling. May you all be lucky enough to recognize the path you might not yet know is ahead of you, to be brave enough to let yourselves off the hook if your chosen path really isn't the one, and to be adventurous enough to try the fork in the road. So much change has hit us recently, a pandemic, the world stopped, so many questions now, what will the new normal be? What will classes look like in the fall? Will I need to wear a mask for a long time? So many questions, and we just can't know. So, not only do you have the challenge and excitement of finding and navigating your personal paths, the collective path is full of unknowns. I hope that we have prepared you all to be confident and innovative and creative and hopeful I hope that we have given you the tools to remain strong, to attack the unknown with vigor and excitement and bravery. I think we have. I look
look at all of you, those of you who have been my students and those of you who haven't, and I feel confident. Today you are walking from high school into your future. The road is not always straight or well marked. You may have made a decision about your path. Oops, you find a detour. Perhaps another path looks better. You might take it and then you decide that it might not be for you. You did not find what you were looking for. Oh, here's a choice. Take another path or walk a different road. Perhaps there were better things here. Oh, I didn't like that route either. Ah, here's something that looks good. Oh, I found something that captures in interest and intrigues me. That something is your calling. I hope for all of you that you may choose your interest. Go with your heart to keep you motivated no matter what you choose. Make sure it resonates with you and make that it makes you want to learn more no matter whether it matches what is in your mind today or turns out to be something totally different. Keep up with your passion. I traveled myself and with students to so many places over the years to keep my passion flowing. I loved the travel and letting students experience other countries and cultures and language. So I have a very funny story about travel. I worked with Dave Curtis both at Montreal School and BBA, and I've known him for 30 years. He taught science in both places and retired a few years ago. But he and his wife accompanied me on my first trip ever. I think it was 89. And we went to the Yucatan in Mexico, along with three other parents and 27 kids. So we had 33 in our group. The first hint of difficulty was getting stuck in Texas after bad storms. Since our group was so big, they kept promising, oh, we're going to put you in a motel, we're going to put you in a hotel. But we ended up spending the night sleeping on the airport seats, waiting to get a room. The students could repeat the airport security warnings from memory from then on. After over 24 hours in the airport, we finally flew directly what would have been our second day destination. However, our luggage never arrived. We had no clothes, no toothbrush, nada. So we all walked to a market and bought something very inexpensive to tide us over. The luggage arrived the next day. We finally got to focus on our visit to Yucatan, the most amazing place I've ever seen in my life called Tulum. We all swam in the ocean and loved it. Magical. But our adventure had not ended. The best is, we always did room checks and usually gave the students a warning that lights would be out in about 45 minutes, so they'd better get ready. We heard that two boys were thinking of sneaking out. So we went to their room to warn them that we were aware and they needed to remember the rules. The little hotel was rather strangely laid out with different stairs going to different alcoves of different groups of rooms. So we approached their door and Dave banged on the door. Open that door, open that door right now. He had a pretty loud voice so they should have been able to hear him. Bang, 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 open that door right now. After the third time, we waited, and this scared little woman peeked out of the room. <laughs> we were mortified. We had the wrong room. And I kept going, oh, siento mucho, lo siento mucho, so sorry. Oh my God, she looked so terrified. So I can only say that after, most trips after that were much more fun than challenge. Nothing quite like that one. And amazing chaperones were always a key and favorite part of class trips. My brother, Merit Council, and my dear friend Anna Alfaro Alexander, who was head of Castleton University Language Department for many years and who just retired, were great teammates on many trips, including our last to Spain a year ago with a lot of you who were out in the audience. Many trips and many great times with students. We had amazing adventures together. So remember, you can lay the very best plans but you can always get tripped up. So I hope you'll be able to embrace flexibility and humor in the face of unexpected challenges. And with these words, I give you a huge hurrah. You did it. You got through four years of BBA being amazing students, 
and just being amazing people. I know you will all become something in the future that we may not have expected. You will wow us. I can't wait to hear about it. My biggest wish is for you to go forth with gratitude, courtesy, and kindness. You will be our magic. With love and always kindness and a smile, because don't forget that a smile is worth a thousand words, always. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Thank you, Sue, and if anyone lives that motto of a smile is worth a thousand words, it's you. So, one more round of applause for Sue Ritchie. We now move towards presentation of our graduates. Before I do, though, I want to start by honoring all parents and guardians who are here today, because we know and you know it's a team effort. So let's give all of you a round of applause. And I also want to recognize that the accomplishments of our seniors are also the accomplishments of the great faculty and staff at Burton Burton Academy. Can we please give a huge honk and round of applause to this group? While there's not much wisdom left to impart, we have given you our best, and you have led this school in amazing ways, even and especially during these recent challenging times. While our seniors know what they have accomplished, there are others here today who might appreciate a small sampling. So let me take a few minutes to tell you about this class. Here are some statistics. Three students are the first in their families to graduate from high school, and 18 students will be the first generation to go to college. 35, yeah, that's worth clapping for. 35 seniors participated in our student success program. 23 students are second generation Bulldogs. 14 have grandparents who are alumni, and some have even longer ties to Burn Burton. As we know, Leah Mori is fourth generation, and I met one student whose great-great-grandmother graduated from BBA back in the mid-1800s. We have six faculty students, faculty and staff students. 37 seniors attended the Mountain Campus. 10 graduates participated in the Target program. Four students took classes at the Career Development Center. 18 of our seniors are international students who are not able to be here because of the coronavirus. And what does the future hold for the class of 2020? Overall, the class of 2020 received nearly 600 offers of admission and will matriculate in 86 different colleges in 20 states, the District of Columbia, Canada, Scotland, and the Netherlands. Five graduates will enlist in military service to our country. 24 students plan to enter the workforce upon graduation. Six seniors are entering technical schools or beginning an apprenticeship. Five graduates will enroll in two-year college programs. And 133 seniors will enroll in a four-year college with five of those pursuing gap years. The class of 2020 possesses stunning talent in sculpture, painting, drawing, photography, cinematography, dance, fashion design, ceramics, and music. It really must be seen and heard to be believed. This group participated in exhibitions at the Southern Vermont Arts Center, Prism Concerts, Musicals, Gallic Awards, Fall Plays, New Works Projects, Performance Showcases, Expos, and they sang at Carnegie Hall. They also produced some amazing virtual performances, performances these last few months, including a truly memorable rendition of Hair. These students ventured forth in the world. Burn Burton seniors went on school-sponsored trips to Alabama, New York City, Washington, D.C., Florida, Costa Rica, Spain, Quebec, Guatemala, 
and all throughout Europe. 15 seniors participated in exchange programs with our partner schools in Ecuador, France, and Germany. Six seniors studied abroad for a semester or a year, experiencing life in Australia, China, Costa Rica, France, and Germany. Regarding athletics, this group saw the addition of varsity bass fishing and ultimate frisbee. Four members of the class of 2020 were also responsible for bringing a unified basketball program to BBA. The class of 2020 helped BBA claim 13 league titles, eight state team championships, including a snowboarding title every year for the past four years, as well as our first D1 football championship. Our first mountain biking regional championship came with, with talent from this class. Distinction has also come to so many of our athletes in the form of selections of special teams and individual honors. We have seven athletes who are named to all state teams and nine athletes to all league teams. This class includes an all-American soccer player, an all-academic all-American lacrosse player, a Vermont Gatorade Player of the Year and high, high School Heisman School Scholar finalist, two NIAA Vermont Scholar athletes, and one regional NIAA winner. 13 athletes were invited to play in postseason competitions in the Twin States games, Lions Cup, Rotary, Shrine, and North-South games. 13 students received Bennington Banner Regional All-Star selections, and one senior athlete stayed a, set a state record in hurdles, even though we still don't have a track. But we're going to have a track because we're building one right now, so that, that deficit will be rectified next year. That, my friends, is Bulldog Strong. Most of all, this class has set a, tone, set a tone of respect for individual differences, support for each other, and care for students in the younger grades. They have overcome a global pandemic. They have helped make us a better school and a stronger community. And I can say in all honesty and sincerity that I will miss this group. Congratulations to the class of 2020 you received your diplomas earlier this week, but now I'm gonna call Ms. Kenny to the stage and she's gonna recognize each and every one of you. Ms. Kenny. The individual diploma ceremonies allowed us to honor and celebrate each one of you with your families. Tonight we gather for one last time to honor you together. Would the graduates please rise so we can acknowledge you as a community.
Cornell. Andrew H. Coulter. Lily Madeline Craig. Karina Marie Crane. Abby Christina Crowley. Megan Ray Curran. Harriet Medigal Dahlstrom. Jonathan T.W. Dats. Tyler Wallace Dolly. Liam Alexander Day. Olivia Ann Day. Enrique Paul De La Rosa Jr. Devin Daniel Dietz. River Joseph De Police. Gianna De Los Santos. Michael Dorita. Bailey Des Roberts. Ben Des Roberts. Kyle Dooling. Christian S Shane Dresser. Abigail Ellen Dryden. Hannah Bailey Dworkin. Yu Fong. Caitlin Elizabeth Fillion. John William Fioco. Did I miss Michael Duddy? I'm sorry, Michael Duddy. Michael Duddy! I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry, Michael Duddy. That's one of my advisees. I can't believe I missed you. Joseph Paul 
McCoy, Dylan M. McMahon, Evo May, Tanya Marie Merrow, John Maselli, Rebecca Elizabeth Montegre, Logan Nicholas Morgan, John Harris Morgantini, Bowden Martin Morris, Eva Morrow, Josie Laurel Mosier, Leah Marie, Leah Elizabeth Mori, Anne Marie R. Mulkey, Evelyn Mulroy, Quinn G. Murnahan, Olivia Catherine Murphy Major, Erica Perez Mejia, Leticia Perez Mejia, Brandon Michael Para, Mackenzie Brooke Peters, Grace Patricia Pincus, Sloan Atwood Peary, Dylan Andrew Papalo, Jackson Carlisle Proctor, Ashton As Ashton Lynn Putnam, Thomas M. Redmond, Gia E. Wren, Austri Elizabeth Samuelson, Logan Emerson Sands, Casey Sargent, Jackson M. Schubert, Matthew Christopher Scott, Evelyn Traven Seidner, Ethan Miles Moore Senegal, Grace Sherwood, Shepard Siegel, Ethan Shattuck Simons, Dakota Douglas Smith, Jordan Emily Smith, Adam Augustus Snikowski, Mason Edward Snide, Michaela Sorvova, Cora M. Susi, Jana L. Spivey, Shay Rose Scolante, Adam Paul Scribney, Emmett Patrick Stahl, Nicholas Richard Stark, Sophia R. Stouse, Benjamin Stalker James, Kelsey Madison Stoddard, Peter H. Strife IV, Bennett R. Swinnerton, Wen Ru Tong, May Elizabeth Thompson, Emma Rose Tobin, Andrew Raymond Toussaint, Isabel Paula Townsend, Li Yang Wan, Shi and Yu Wang, Xuan Wang, Yiming Wang, Thomas Michael Watson, Allison E. Webster, Jia Hong Wei, Tanner Benjamin Williams, Stephen John Woods, Tian Chi Wu, Xing Yua Zhang, Zi Tuan Xuan Zhang, Congratulations to the class of 2020. All right. We're going to make some noise and we're going to have a photo moment. So get your cameras ready, get your caps ready, because when I declare you graduates, and I haven't declared you graduates yet, but when I do, you may toss your caps, you may fire your cameras, and we're going to ring the bell. Dean of Faculty Mike Carrico is going to hammer on the bell. Is everybody ready? And I want to hear noise. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare the class of 2020 
to be graduates of Burr and Burton Academy. sing our alma mater. figure out how to get you out of here in orderly fashion. So, we're going to dismiss students first. Whoop, we're going to dismiss students first. Please take a few minutes to put your chairs away, and then I will give you the signal. The signal will be Bulldogs start your engines, and that will signify that we're ready to start moving people. But let's take a couple minutes to get prepared. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. 